recorded. If you don't want your uh, voice on this beautiful recording, then uh, please uh, do not speak up. And we can always chat. And I'm happy not to mention any names if that's if if you can see something that I think that I'm presenting. So thank you so much for joining the uh, the training. Uh, this is training uh, in the ITB to Transport Foundation training set. Um, which there are many more, and I'm sure Diane will have the link for us where to find uh, more of those trainings. Today we'll be talking about Glowing Bear. Glowing Bear is a wonderful new user interface that we've developed here at the Hive together with many of our customers, uh, and especially many people in the European commun community. It's a very uh, exciting and enthusiastic uh, community, as I'll show in a moment. It's a user interface that we've developed on Transmart, um, and which is completely open source and I'd love to uh, show you more today. Um, my name is Ward Weistra. I work at The Hive. Uh, I work here in the data warehousing team, uh, mainly uh, having contact with many of our customers. And I'm here together with my colleague, Elisa. Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah. yeah, I am so. Elisa Cirillo, and I'm the product owner of uh, here at The Hive. And I'm also curating Blue & Bear uh, as a product here. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So Elisa is the one who knows exactly where this product is going. So uh, feel free to reach out to us. I'll see now that I should put some uh, contact details in here. Uh, our our contact details are just uh, ward at the hive.nl and Elisa at the hive.nl. So feel free to get in contact after this meeting too. Uh, but I'm sure we'll send around this slide deck uh, to, to inform you there. Um, very short pitch about the hive. So the hive is a software company. Um, but we're not your regular software company in the sense that we don't charge any licenses. Um, we work with open source software and we work with custom development to build your data management infrastructure. Um, and we've done that in the life sciences for uh, since 2012. We're now around 45 people here in the, uh, the Netherlands and in the US. And we basically do everything that you would expect from a commercial vendor around your commercial product. Um, we are happy to do that around your open source products and also to make that work with anything else. Um, we have kind of four teams working here, and one team that we're talking to today is the team on the top left, uh, data warehousing. Basically, we're working in any data management infrastructure. Um, so if you have a challenge, please reach out to us, and we're happy to work with you there. On the product itself, Glowing Bear is the new user interface that we've built for uh, on top of Transpart, and it's really powerful for coverage selection, for analysis, everything which you basically expected from the old Transpart user interface, but then in a much more modern, uh, modern uh, jacket. Um, it supports all the new features that we've built with uh, Transmart 17.1, uh, which uh, are time series and support for uh, samples and support for cross data analysis. And we'll show you many of these today um functionality as i kind of already uh, alluded to uh, we really started when you when you build a new user interface you really need to see okay what are the core features from that the previous user interface because you can never replicate them all and and you probably shouldn't want to so we really started with coverage selection basically this is the point where i2b2 and transmart come together we really want to be really strong on the on these cohort selection queries that ITB2 is doing in the clinical setting and that Transmart was doing in the pharma setting. Um, so be able to ask your queries based on time series, based on samples, uh, based on all phenotypic data, and later we'll also move to, uh, to genomic data and those kind of things. Um, and then once you have an interesting data selection based on patients, based on variables, um, you want to do some analysis. So do that exploratory analysis, which Transmart was really good at. Um, and uh, be able to export uh, and go further to any tool that you want to use. We have moved with that also the authentication to a separate application called Keycloak. Keycloak is also open source um, and it's very widely used, so it supports all your uh, broader, uh, popular, uh, um, uh, how do you call that, profiles? No, the popular. Uh, specifications to, to interact with your own local identity management system. As I said, this software is fully open source um, and it's all available here on uh, github.com slash the hive glowing bear. But actually the better website to go to is glowingbear.app, but I'll, I'll spam that in a moment uh, a bit more. Um, the current license is the Mozilla Public License 2, just like ITB2. Um, so it's a, it's a common license, your, your, your license people will know how to handle that. 
this is basically a snapshot of the community that's working currently around this. Um, and I'm sure we're not completely up to date even with this, but th this was the Glowingbear community meeting that we had here in our offices in Utrecht uh, last December. You'll see that there is a lot of the Dutch community here. So there's the Princess Maxima Center uh, for Pediatric Oncology. Um, I'll come back to them in a moment, um, but they're based here in Utrecht too. Uh, and they just presented at last the IoT World uh, Conference also on this work. Um, of course, we were ourselves there. Uh, so this is me here. Elisa must be somewhere here. Oh, there she is. Um, we had people from Philips with us, with Leiden University Medical Center and the Netherlands Twin Registry. I'll also come back to them in a moment. Uh, we had Peter here, who you just heard already uh, from the ITB the Transmart Foundation. Um, we had the people from the German The Future Consortium. Uh, other uh, German consortia were also on the line. Uh, this is a large European consortium called Pioneer, and Health Arai is the Dutch uh, national health infrastructure. So these people are all thinking how to continue with this platform and how to how to move it along. Um, I'll start with a few use cases so you, you you know where to embed this platform. So this is the Dutch Twin Registry, the Netherlands Twin Register, and what you understand from that is that this is a register with all twins in the Netherlands. Um, it's quite self-explanatory. So they came to us and uh, had uh, the need for a new data warehouse solution to give out their data. And this is a common uh, request that we'll see. Um, they needed a way to have a catalog to show people what data is available. They needed to have a process to um, let people request that data. And then their data managers needed to have a powerful cohort selection tool where they could create exactly this uh, selection that the researchers um, asked for and, um, and filter this on any variables, maybe add some other variables that they think is, are interesting. And then they could create this file um, and export this to a SPSS file. NTSV. Uh, NTSV file, and they could share this directly with their researchers. And the skill that we should think about here is really uh, quite large. So these are uh, 400,000 subjects um, and a lot of variables. And the bulk files are handled in a different system, but they're basically linked to the, the data here in Transmart. So this is one of the early projects where we worked um, on, on applying Glow Bear. Another one I just mentioned uh, is the Princess Maxima Center. Uh, this is a large-scale operation where all the pediatric cancer for uh, the Netherlands are centralized currently here in Utrecht. And they opened halfway last year, and we worked with them from the start with Patrick Camera to build up um, a modern research data infrastructure from the beginning. So this is a unique challenge where a hospital can start from scratch uh, without too much legacy software, and they could do it right from the beginning where they wanted to be able to give their researchers direct access to the data that was being uh, collected as soon as possible, but of course, pseudonymized. So um, the, the patient's privacy was, was maintained. Um, and what we built for them is this uh, setup where we combined uh, Transmart together with CBIO portal and with the Glowing Bear user interface. So in the central subject registry, as they call it, um, we set up Glowing Bear with a uh, quite small uh, data model. And we'll come back to the data model uh, at the end of the presentation uh, because we built some really nice features from them lately. Um, and this small data model really functions as the core data model that every researcher within their institute is, is allowed to see. Um, and with that, they can find shopping lists uh, of where to find these patients, where to find more data for these patients in all the different systems that are connected. So in the biobank data system, in the NGS system, uh, and any other uh, study and query systems that they have. Um, and this is a recent tweet from uh, Patrick Camera, where they presented this at the, at the Dutch National uh, System Biology Conference, BioSB. Um, and they're really happy with the result. And also, Patrick, um, you can find uh, you can find some uh, links to that in our in our Twitter history, um, but they also presented at the Bio IT World Conference recently, uh, two weeks ago in uh, in Boston, which was also very well received. Um, and finally, uh, this is a change that we made with Glowing Bear for the Leiden University Medical Center, where we 
basically wanted to come a bit closer to the ITB2 kind of use case, uh, where sometimes you don't want uh, your researchers, uh, depending on, on which researchers you give access to the interface, you don't want them to be able to download the data or to see the actual patient data. Um, but here we just are giving counts back based on their queries. So this is a specific setup of, of glowing bear that you can choose to make available through your researchers where this only see counts for their queries um, and also obfuscated um, above a certain um, a certain threshold. So with that, um, I basically I think I gave enough introduction for us to go to the actual user interface um, and just do a live demo. Um, as you can see here, glowingbear.app is really where you would like to start. Um, so that's also what I will do myself. I'll we'll go to glowingbear.app. And this is a public website that we're maintaining um, where you can see a nice introduction, how to get started with the user interface. Um, and you'll see a description of what it is. Um, you'll see our kind of feature list. Uh, we also try to kind of maintain a roadmap of what is coming, like this is in development, so I'll show you in a moment the skill, the support, the browser, etc. So that's the, the short run on the homepage. And then there's a few things where you can go to. You can see the code here on GitHub. Um, just feel free to go there if you're a developer. Uh, and um, if you like something a little bit more organized, then this is the Getting Started page. Uh, we have uh, um, the Quick Start Guide, which is a short version of our manual. We have a full manual with all kinds of screenshots, what you can do with it. Um, we also have some more technical documentation. So this is uh, the installation information um, and also the technical docs where we, for example, have a really nice, not easy, but really nice overview of all the different parts that go into uh, Glow and Bear, uh, more information on the data model, on the API, et cetera. Um, but for those just wanting to scope out the user interface, we'll walk through these tutorials and mainly I'll fo focus on tutorial number one, where we um, work with a data set which is uh, called the synthetic mass data set. It's uh, a kind of uh, public uh, data set, it's a synthetic data set, um, which should represent the patient uh, population of Massachusetts in 2021. And that's what's currently loaded in our demo server. Um, and with that, I'll go to the demo server. I see there is a question in the chat. Um, and it's from Steve Patterson here. Is it possible to install Glowingbear on top of an existing ITBT infrastructure and use the Glowingbear UI instead of the ITBT UI? Um, so that's a great question. Um, it's not necessarily plug and play, um, but the data model, um, as I've just quickly shown, but I can go back to that later, um, of Transmart 1701 is basically the ITBT schema uh, with a small extension. So it is very possible to do a view or a migration from your ITB2 data to the 17.1 data model. I think that would be the kind of best answer at this point. Um, so feel free everyone to, to, to come up with questions while I'm uh, going. I'd be happy to answer those. So with this um, tutorial that you're also very well able to do by yourself, um, I'll kind of start my, my demonstration here. Um, so when you click on demo, you will go to our public uh, demo server, clonebear.hive.net, and it will check whether you're logged in or not. If you're not, then you will be redirected here to Keycloak. Um, if you don't have a user account yet, create one for yourself. You'll get an email, you can verify that, and then you have your login details just as I have here. And I will log in, quickly check the question. Um, Ah, Christian Bauer asks a question with some, uh, he has some extra knowledge. When is the first release of Glowing Bear uh, Docker planned? That is a great question. You have uh, carefully watched our uh, GitHub. Um, we are currently building that for the future. Um, yeah. Elisa? Yeah, exactly. Bart said we are currently building for the future. And uh, I would say that uh, we try to end up uh, about summer, this summer 2019. Okay, so that's like June-ish. Right. Yeah, we have to see. Of course, it's a project dependent, so it's it's not only that the Docker plan, also had other dependency there, but more or less we aim for summer 2019. Yeah, so indeed, Docker is a really nice and easy way to install. 
as I said, we already have our installation instructions on the website, um, but Docker would just make this a little bit easier. And we're working on that right now um, due to be released in the summer. Um, but if you want to work with us on this, feel free to contact us, man. Yeah. We might be, uh, be able to speed that up. So we have arrived in the Glowenberg user interface. Um, first of all, um, let's start with what should be very familiar to you, which is here the ontology tree. This is the same kind of tree that you see in Transmart and ITB2, where you have a nice overview of all your different, um, all your different uh, variables and a quick overview of what's in there. So you see we have basically two main folders here. I kind of set it up like an ITB2 server in this case. We have a demographics data and we have condition data for this one big data set. Um, if you want a more like a transport setup, you can also just represent all your studies in here. Um, but for this time I want for a more like a hospital setup. Um, you can quickly see that we have different variables in here, um, like this categorical variable, birthplace where someone born, and we have 4,462 patients. We actually have a value for this. And same for this date uh, data type. Uh, we have the birth date for everyone who was born. Um, and we have for the, also for the same amount, all patients here, that the information. And you see here also that we have these um, ontologies in here where we have uh, a nice structuring of, of these ontologies um, in the same way that you would find it um, in like BioPortal. Um, so we will use this in a moment to create our cohort selections. Currently, you can see that we haven't selected any data yet. So we have zero shipping, zero observation selected, but that will change. Um, and we'll do that with the data selection tab. Data selection currently exists of three steps. So first you define which patients am I interested in? Um, and once you've defined that with your inclusion and exclusion criteria, um, you can go to the second step and then say, okay, for these patients, I'm only interested in data from these specific variables. So then basically you cre created a kind of Excel sheet with your patients on the, on the rows and your uh, variables on the, on the columns. And that allows us to go to step three, where we can view the selected data. So this is very similar to the kind of grid view setup uh, or table export from I2B2. Um, and um, you have this kind of Excel sheet. You can go to, to that overview or you can go to analysis or you can go to export. So this is really the, the first step that we'll start with. So let's define um, our patient query. So we have inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria. Um, first, let's see, for example, so as I mentioned, this is a data set that represents Massachusetts in 2021. Um, so let's see maybe everyone who was born after, let's say, 1950. Um, I'll do it a bit rough. Of course, this is ninth of uh, um, later in 2050 at least but we have um, of our total of 1400 subjects we have 970 left so 66 percent of the total so we can quickly like okay but i only interested in any patient who was born in a specific town so we see that we have a long list of options here, um, every town here in Massachusetts. But this time I'll focus on, of course, we want to know everyone from Boston, maybe include uh, my favorite town there, Cambridge too. I see that we have only 107 subjects left who were both born in these cities and were born after 1950. So these are these really uh, simple demographic sinus queries. Um, and we can make it a bit more interesting when we say, for example, um, we search for a specific diagnosis. So in this case, I already copied from our tutorial page um, the SNOMED code for, um, I don't think I have it open anymore right now. Tutorial. Um, so the hospital data tutorial. Um, I copied from, uh, from here from BioPortal this, uh, the SNOMED code for uh, diabetes type two. Um, and we can just quickly search on that here in the tree and see quickly that we have three results for diabetes because it's represented in multiple places in the SNOMED ontology. 
And this is just something that Glowing Bear is perfectly able to handle. So you will see all three results where there's actually type two diabetes. Um, and we can even nest uh, data under that categorical variable. But here, let's see who is uh, of these 107 people actually ever at any point had diabetes observation. Okay, so we're still left with six subjects in total. Um, so that's great. Um, so this is, I showed you kind of uh, simple categorical uh, queries, uh, date queries. Of course, there are numerical queries possible too in the same kind of uh, setup. Um, we can now, since we have date and sample support in Transmart, um, uh, also ask a bit more complicated questions. So let's make it a bit more simpler. We have 41 subjects who were born after 1950 and had a version of type 2 diabetes. Um, but let's say that we want to make sure that these people only had diabetes in the last 10 years. So then we can apply a extra constraint on this, that this observation of diabetes uh, needs to have an observation date. So we apply an observation date um, where the observation is somewhere between, well, in the last 10 years, so after 2009. And you'll see that we have 10 subjects left. So this is a really quick, nice way to get an overview of uh, the data that's in here. So um, before we leave this screen, maybe one extra comment that we can make this as complex as we want. Um, so we can make this kind of uh, nested and or queries where we can do, um, yeah, we can, we can basically put the brackets in any way that we want. Um, I won't make it too complicated right now, but this is how you would do that. And similarly, just as I can search here in the tree, I can also type here anything. So anything that I would be interested in, I can just say, okay, give me gender, uh, the concept, or give me the SNOMAD code, and then you will see this one or any SNOMAD code, which is below that. Um, so that's a bit more on the, on the patient selections. So we did this inclusion exclusion criteria. We have our patient set, and now let's move on to step two. Um, so in step two, um, we can select uh, the variables that we're interested in. So once I click update here, you will see that um, we have our uh, uh, the same tree as we have here on the left, but then there are checkboxes here because now we can select with this all variables that we're interested in. And this tree is already filtered, having only uh, uh, still variables where there's actually data available for these 10 patients that we've selected. So now we can see, okay, there's for like 10 patients, um, data available on birth date, and we have 10 observations for this. So everyone has one birth date. Well, that's, that's very uh, comforting. Um, so let's say we're interested in demographic data here. Um, and we can select any other data that we want, but let's just focus on that data for now. Uh, we click update, and then you'll see that we still have our 10 subjects left in, uh, in step two, but we now only have 60 of the total of 100. Uh, 170 observations that came for kind of step one. So that's our step two completed now. And you'll see here that our current data selection is now filled. We kind of have this Excel sheet of data and we can see that here in step three. So in step three, once we click update, we get this uh, grid view kind of overview. Um, and um, a grid view used to be quite simple in all transport because we only had two dimensions. We have patients and we had um, concepts. But now um, we have many more dimensions. And actually this study uh, or this data set isn't too complicated, but you see that we have at least four dimensions in here, some of which aren't filled for, for these specific observations that we have here. Um, so we needed to make something that allows you to really flexibly build this table in a way that makes sense to you. So right now you see that we have patients on the rows. So this column here are all the patient identifiers. And once you hover over, you get more information on what the original patient ID was, et cetera. And then we have three dimensions on the columns. So we have first here, which study was it in, which data set, uh, which concept does it belong to, and then the start time, which is here currently empty for uh, all our subjects. But if you think that it makes more sense to you to have kind of a long format table where you say, okay, let's put um, let's put the concept on the on the rows instead. Once we click update, you'll see that this is reflected in the table. So you can structure this table in any way that it makes sense to you. Um, and this will also be reflected once we go to export, which I will show in a moment. 
Uh, so remember that we ended with kind of this long format. Um, so as I said, once we have this kind of Excel sheet, we can go to this grid view overview, or we can go to analysis or go to export. So I'll quickly show the analysis as it is now. So this is the cross table, um, which is a very basic analysis in here to dive deeper into your, your selection. I'll show you more fancy analysis in a moment. You should watch the time, by the way, we're halfway. Um, so with the cross table, we quickly can use some categorical variables to get a breakdown. So in this case, I can show, okay, this is the gender distributions in my 10 patients. And we can also maybe break that down again by ethnicity. And then we quickly can get an overview. Okay, everyone with diabetes type two, well, this is kind of the distribution that we get for this in, in Boston and Cambridge. And finally, that same Excel sheet, we can bring that to the exports. So this is our, uh, our demo for uh, dia diabetes two. We create that export, you see that it's added here to the table. Uh, you can do anything now, you can just go somewhere else and come back later, uh, but this won't take long. So we'll just wait until it has finished gathering the data. And then we can download that as a CSV file and view that in Excel or anything else that makes sense to us. So there it is. Let's download this quickly. Open it. Quickly look at all my downloads. Um, and then there's the data, uh, which I'll just open quickly with Excel here. So yeah, quick Excel is on my Mac. Um, and you'll see here that we have the same structuring that I just saw in my data table. So again, the table that makes sense to you, you'll see reflected here. Um, and uh, this is the data file. Um, in the folder here, you see that there's more information, for example, when we also open the concepts file. Um, there's more information on all the different concepts that we have used. Um, so in the data file, we just see um, the concept code kind of, so demographic birth date, but then here you will also see the related SNOMED code, uh, the path in the tree, et cetera. So more information um, that's used there. Good. Um, so let's get back here because I need to finish the basics of uh, Glowing Bear. Um, I have shown you um, the, basically everything here except for the query tab. Uh, and this is where we can now save our query. This is everyone uh, after 1950 with diabetes. We can save this query. It will be added here to my queries. Um, we can use this to later when we come back, restore the same query that we had before. We can also download the kind of JSON file that we can share. I can share this with Elisa and she can open her account and then import it here uh, and she will get exactly the same query. So it allows you for nicely sharing. Um, and something really cool that we've built together with Princess Maxima Center, um, where you can subscribe to this query. So if uh, more patients will be added to your database every night or every week, you will get an email with, hey, you were interested in this query, you subscribe to it, um, there's two new patients available, go to Glowing Bear and you can, you can see them. And this allows you to include more patients in, in your study, for example. Good, so this is kind of the basics of Glowing Bear as it is currently now. So as you see, this is the 1.0 release that we have on, on our public demo server. Um, because you're here and um, interested in Glowing Bear, we wanna show you a bit more, we wanna go a bit deeper. Um, so, and still, by the way, feel free to jump in with any questions at any point. Um, so I'll go to our, oh, there's a question, great. That's exactly what I hope for. Um, Christian Bauer asked another great question, which is, will there be a query like criteria A before criteria B? So Christian is kind of referring to what I call event-based queries, um, which is something that Transmart, of course, was never able to do. And I2B2 has an interface for this, which is really powerful. Um, we don't have that yet in Glowing Bear. I should say though, that um, what I hear from um, uh, people who are actually using this in I2B2, is that it looks nice, um, but often the data is basically not good enough to give you a good answer. So you have asked the question in exactly the right way, um, but you still might not get any, any uh, responses because the data is not good enough. Um, but still, it's 
would be something that we'd love to build or we would love to see someone else add this to, to the functionality. It's definitely something we've heard, heard before. So you can ask time series queries indeed where you say, okay, did something happen after 1950? Um, but not necessarily like everyone who had a stroke after being uh, handed this, this drug. Okay, let's uh, move to our internal development server where we can see the cutting edge and where we'll hope that no one has broken this since we tested last time. Um, so I'll make sure that I'm just logged in again, still hooked up to uh, Keycloak. Um, yeah, very good. So this is basically what we call 2.0. Well, partially, right? Because the flux is part one being there. Um, there's a few things that will change uh, coming up. So we have the 2.0 release. Uh, we try to be really open on our on our roadmap. So this is coming out probably end of May. That's what we're planning for. So this is funded together with NTR, Princess Maxima Center, um, and uh, and Health Rye. Thank you. Um, and one of the big changes that you see here is the change in the flow here. So we basically moved only the patient selection to, to this tab. And you can, when you go to analysis or data export, further refine which variables you're interested in. That's step one. Um, a second thing you might see here is this little patient icon here. Um, and this patient icon, um, Elisa, maybe you can give us some example queries what we can do with that. Yes, well, actually, the, uh, the patient icon is uh, started to, to, to be implemented because we have now a possibility to ask a uh, query based on different dimensions. And uh, in this view, you can see what we mean for dimension. And essentially, it's uh, another way to call samples. So if you want to ask uh, uh, a question not anymore, how many patients have a specific uh, diagnosis, you could ask, give me uh, all the images that have a specific uh, characteristic or give me a, um, a specific biomaterials that have, uh, um, that is related to a tumor type. Yeah, so basically previously every question that you asked was evaluated on the patient level. Yeah. So does the patient have this, does the patient have that? So you basically couldn't ask a question are these two things true in the same sample right yeah, indeed yeah. and now the what you get of course as a quick view is still the number of subjects that have a characteristic uh, related to that but when you will do the export then you will get the, the output of all your sample or all your diagnosis and so on uh, I can try to make a, a, qu a query like this. So um, I think uh, I want to first show uh, a kind of similar query that uh, Vart ask, uh, just asked to just see you what is the real difference. And I will start with, uh, let me see. One more. Yeah. So uh, we start with patient um, and we start to ask the first uh, all the female, for example in my a female in my data set that have uh, also for example that uh, is a twin and this uh, it reflects here basically what uh, um, uh, it, it is a basically a patient centric uh, uh, question and the news that you can see is that now we try to help the user to uh, follow the build the, the query that he has built, so the question. So uh, you can see here for the patient, uh, there is an observation related to gender, and this is female, and this patient uh, also are linked to another observation that is twin. So in this way, we try to um, let's say simplify or or explicitly show uh, the, the the question made. So these uh, are all female twins, right? Yes, these yeah. are all female twins. Maybe before we make the question more complicated, we should explain the data model, right? Yeah. Um, so we have kind of, um, did, what you see here is really flexible. Uh, what we see here, um, which which entities you have, uh, because this changes in every, every uh, setting. So when we look at the, at the Princess Maxima Center data model, you will see, once it's done loading, that we have patients, of course, um, patients are still the core entity in, in, in the data model. Mm -hmm. But 
these patients will have, um, sadly, um, different tumor diagnoses. And for example, in this case, the basal cell carcinoma. Um, and from these tissue, uh, from these tumors, different samples are taken, and these are called uh, bio biosources. So I was mix up which one which. Um, and from these biosources, different biomaterials are collected out of this sample. So this is basically the the the, the entities within the the, the Princess Maxima data uh, model. And you need to be able to query uh, and be able to ask your query on each of these different levels. So this is basically a data model that came to us with, um, where you have different um, patients who are linked to different diagnoses, who are linked to different biosources, who are linked to biomaterials. And these can even be linked to themselves. But we need to be able to ask queries. Someone who is interested in doing some specific staining uh, needs to be able to ask queries like, I want biosources that, are, that have both these characteristics. But as I said, this, you can set this up in any way you want. You can also just have patients with samples or, or anything else, like the five layers that TCGA has. So, yeah. good. So, following that, if, I don't, if, 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 if it was clear with the connection uh, that just Bart showed, uh, we uh, now are asking uh, a question based on, on that data model because this is exactly uh, in this scenario what, what we have. Uh, so let me ask this question that is related to um uh, let me go first yeah okay here you can see the 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 different dimension that we just showed the patient information the diagnosis information the biosource and the biomaterial and then the study so these five items were exactly those that were just shown now and let me ask the question related to the biomaterial for example i want any uh, i want to know a biomaterial and then i start to add here and the specific biomaterial type that i want is uh, i have here available either dna or rna but i want an rna uh, sorry a dna <laughs> And I want, uh, at the same time, that this biomaterial is uh, related to a specific diagnosis, or in the PMC lexicon is a tumor type. And the tumor type that uh, I want to pick it up now, let's say, are uh, neuroblastoma. Is neuroblastoma. So this is a query in which I expect a list of biomaterials, specific DNA biomaterial, that are linked to uh, a neuroblastoma. Now, as I, no, it's updated, okay. We have only one subject that actually show has this, but um, of course, uh, this is subject related, but the, the number of biomaterials, uh, the list of ID of biomaterials will be then listed in the data export. Yeah, so uh, now at the moment, actually we don't, we are not in the environment of the PMC, <laughs> so we cannot show you the, the export, but uh, in their site, you could really uh, have a similar export that just was showed with the, with the list of uh, ID of the biomaterial. Okay, yes. great. So I think uh, given the time, we should probably move on to more functionalities or is there anything? Yeah, no, I think that is in essence a little bit uh, the, the, the new version of these uh, first, uh, um, uh, is basically the, the core of the core selection now uh, and the view is changed and this is the takeoff message of uh, the, the version 2.0, enable basically query on different type of dimension and the example is on the samples that yeah. we just showed now. And a different view. So yeah. these things are coming in the in the next release, coming next month. Yeah. Uh, you also see some other changes uh, with the inclusion, exclusion directly in each block. You can uh, ask even more powerful queries than, than before. Um, so we're really happy with these additions. Um, and then maybe uh, one more thing I'd like to show is something which is actually possible already right now, which are pedigree relationships. Um, so we yeah. can... Is the twin? Yeah, so so uh, we can ask, as Elisa just showed, yeah. who is a twin, but we can also show, give me all patients who are a parent of a twin in this case. So um, that's uh, that's another uh, really cool feature yeah. um, that we built for the Dutch twin registry, obviously. And you can, again, configure this in any kind of patient-patient relationships which make sense to you. So be able to uh, map out families and those kind of things. Um, 
Finally, something which are of course really happy for, uh, which is which is coming um, later this year, is the more interactive visual analytics. And for that, I'll take a few cards which I've previously made. So um, we can, in, where we in the old Transmart uh, basically could only compare one or two cohorts at a time, we can now make as many cohorts as we want and select them here and be able to compare them side by side. Secondly, when we go to analysis here, we build the Fractalis uh, uh, visual interactive analytics in there. Uh, so this is a plugin which is built by the University of Luxembourg. And um, right now I've selected three of my cohorts. You see that there is totally these 793 patients in there combined. Um, and here you will see only the variables which are available for these patients. So let me make a nice analysis here. Um, so I'll collapse this for a moment for clarity. Um, I can show you here a box plot where I want to see, um, well, just, so this data isn't very sensible, but let's just say we want a box plot for our numerical data here. Uh, and then we want different groups in there for gender. But we also have different groups in there, of course, for the three different cohorts. So once I click add here, you will see these six different boxes for subset one, subset two, subset three, for female and male. So this is really nice, uh, but it's also fully interactive. So you can see all the statistics once you once you hover over. You can see some easy statistics here. Um, of course, with easy statistics, you should always be careful that all the different prerequisites are met. Uh, so as I always say, don't publish straight out of Transmart, uh, but this is really powerful for your exploratory analysis. Um, you can use the side panel here to also show you the points in there. Put some jitter in there to get a better feeling, show some density estimations, etc. So we have really powerful visual analytics in here. So one plot is nice, but uh, what's way nicer is two plots. So when I show scatter plots here, uh, I can now also show you that um, if I uh, add an extra plot here, so this is a scatter plot of two numerical values against each other, maybe we want to color those by a categorical variable. Um, and you see the little loading icon here, that's actually the data being loaded into the cache. So once that is done, it's really quick to do any, uh, any different analysis uh, on them. And you'll see that in a moment. So I add my new plot here, it's being added here to the bottom. You might think, oh no, the logo, the, the legend is over there, but we can just move that to the side, it's all interactive. And first of all, this is a really pretty confetti plot, um, but secondly, there is a really nice interaction between the two plots. So once I make a selection here, you will see that my other plot updates based on that. And similarly, when I would just keep moving it around, um, it will update. Uh, and the same way is the other way around. So if I'm not only interested in the males, uh, my plot quickly updates based on that. So this is something we're really happy with. This is something we're actually planning only for a release uh, a little bit later, probably in, uh, in fall, um, but uh, this will enable a way more uh, interactive analysis. And there's way more plots available already in here. Uh, survival plots, uh, uh, histograms, really nice. Um, the cross table is still there and you can, you can make that work too. Um, yeah, so I think that's uh, the key features of what I wanted to show. Um, maybe let me see if there's any other slides which I've missed here. I don't think so. There's many other things I would uh, be able to say here. So on data loading or on, um, on the roadmap or those kind of things. But I do want to open it up here to the group since we have a nice group uh, available. Um, are there any questions, any things you would like me to get deeper in? Um, I'll also open the chat. Feel free to unmute yourself or to put your hand up. You want me to unmute you? Okay. So in the meantime, I do want to show you that uh, just my, my overview slides, go to glowingbear.app. Um, make sure that you create an account for yourself on glowingbear.hives.net. 
Um, there you can play around with the data set that I have. On Glowing Bear, that app, as I mentioned, go to Getting Started, go to Tutorials, uh, do the first tutorial. There's uh, more information and help on you for you to, uh, to get you started. And you'll uh, be able to play around with all the things that I've shown you so far, um, except for, of course, the newest features, which will be released later this month or in the, in, in the fall. If you're interested in seeing what it can mean for your group, for your, um, for your hospital, for your research uh, organization, for your uh, pharmaceutical group, um, of course, we'd be happy to give you any, any demo with your own data, et cetera, uh, how to make it work for you. Um, maybe since I have a bit more time, I want to show you a bit more here um, on a common way where we um, see this interacting. What we often see is that we kind of make this three-step process, especially for when we have like biobanks or registries who want to make their data available to the outside world, but also in a kind of uh, hospital setting. Um, you first want to, of course, you have many different data sources and you want to make the data available for reuse to your, uh, to your researchers, either internally or in a wider context. First, you do want to provide them with something of a data catalog, and this can take many forms. In the simplest version, you just make PDFs available of the stuff that you've collected, your, your code books. But if you want to go a bit more uh, detail, um, we built this really nice uh, data showcase, uh, kind of based on the, on the UK Biobank data showcase, but again, fully open source, um, where you can show the same tree as you have in Transmart, um, but then um, just have uh, summary level data on a uh, variable level. Um, so you're not giving away any sensitive patient information, but you do give everyone a really clear insight into what data is available. And this allows people to select uh, variables of interest, put them in a shopping cart, and then send you a request of data, basically only requesting data that you actually have. So there's no more going back and forth between the data manager and the researcher, which uh, eliminates a lot of waste of time. Secondly, you want to have a nice process where you, uh, which facilitates you for, for accessing uh, or for sending a researcher this request. Um, you can do this by email, of course, again, make a PDF form and let people email that in. But if you want to have a nice overview of all your uh, requests that you're handling in, the, in your institute, or as a reviewer, you want to know what your to-do list is, how many reviews you still need to collect, we've built this really nice Podium open source tool together with the Dutch BBMRI, so the collaborating biobanks. This allows you to send a request, start it maybe from a different tool, um, and then it will federate out this request to all the different organizations which are involved in here and they are able to handle their own process uh, are being able to review that uh, process in any way that they want uh, send it out for approval and then eventually send the data back once the, uh, if it's improved if it's approved and finally then once you have the data uh, approved you can either directly give that data to the, to the people. So that's what NTR does. NTR uses Glowing Bear to select the data set and give that to the researcher in SPSS or in TSV file. But you can also do it the other way around where you basically load that data set then into a Glowing Bear user interface and um, give that to the researcher. And then a the researcher has a nice powerful interface where they can do the visual uh, clicking around and playing around with the data. So again, you start with this biobank uh, with, with this kind of data showcase, where you have this full codebook overview, you can search, you can easily add them to the shopping cart. Then you can start. Uh, you can request with multiple organizations at once. And then finally, you can use Glowing Bear to, to do, see your data overview, to do drag and drop code selection, do all the complex queries that you want, and now even use these longitudinal queries. Um, I see another question here uh, from Anubama. Um, is this a secure process for sharing the files? Um, I think you're probably referring here to the Podium. Um, so uh, Podium itself handles more the, the request, not necessarily the data itself. Um, if you want a secure process for sharing files, um, there is some nice tools for that um, out there, even in the open source market, there is the kind of 
open source version for Probox, um, or a simple FTP could uh, could work for this. Um, so we'll basically handle that still outside. Uh, what we have done with many people is that you actually would load um, that you would load the links or the identifiers of the files in Transmart. So you can quickly make a selection of okay, I want all the files for these patients which have uh, these specific specific characteristics, diagnosis, etc. And then you get a list of identifiers or URLs to the files that you actually want to hand out. And then you can easily make a process to select those, collect those, make a zip file and, and put them on the, on the FTP where you want to share them. Okay. Well then, if there's no more questions, um, I thank you all so much for your attention. Um, I want to give Diane the opportunity to speak. But I'm not sure if she figured out the technical situation yet. Um, since we're not hearing her, um, she's probably uh, not be able to speak. In that case, I want to thank you both on behalf of uh, the Hive. Oh, there's a more question. There's one more question. Very good. Oh, it's a thank you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. If you want to reach out to us, uh, please send us an email at uh, ward at thehive.nl or elisa at thehive.nl. Um, and um, yeah, I look so much uh, forward to getting in contact. And of course, we're happy to share these slides uh, once we get the um, once we get the um, the email addresses of you. I'm not sure that the foundation will share this with us. And Diane is still not able to speak, but she thanks you all very much. Elisa, anything else? Yeah, yeah. nothing. Just uh, bye and have a good day. Good. <laughs> Looking forward to see you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.